Let's go to Luke 7, 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city was a sinner. Heaven say a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had hidden him saw it, uh, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him. For she is a sinner. Most gracious heavenly Father, I ask you to decrease me and increase me in me that I might speak, herald, preach, proclaim, teach your unadulterated word with clarity. Hallelujah, God. And with Holy Ghost precision, I ask you, God, to, to uh, allow the word use, hallelujah, this vessel to deliver, hallelujah, an anointed word to your people today, that they may be able to be increased, inspired, hallelujah, challenged, and blessed in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, today, I want to talk to you uh, from a thought. Use what you have. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you may feel that you don't have a lot, but I encourage you to use what you have. Uh, in our text, we find Jesus has been busy doing ministry. He healed uh, the centurion servant, raised a widow woman's son from the dead at the funeral, opened blind the eyes, healed the sick bodies, and forgave sin. Jesus is always found doing what he's supposed to do. Him say, use what you have. Bible says that rumors had spread of the miracles that Jesus had performed all through the city of Capernaum and the Pharisees, the you know, the legalists of uh, the day, the religious community, the church folk. Let me say the Pharisees. The Pharisees were disturbed. They were disturbed because Jesus was always working outside of the lines and limits of their understanding. Jesus works outside of the lines and limits of the world's view. The world, if the world can't understand what's going on, it'll do uh, one or two things. It'll try to learn to see if it's part of its mission and they'll receive it if it's part of their mission and if it's not, they are denied and, and, and rejected as nothing at all. They are outside of their understanding Jesus is working. Friends, when Jesus shows up, things in your life will change. Listen, when you give your heart to Jesus, get ready for the limits to be broken and freedom declared. Because my brothers and my sisters, the Bible tells me that who the Son, the Christ, hallelujah, of, the, uh, of God sets free is free indeed. One day Jesus was teaching the disciples and showing them how difficult it was for man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
And when the disciples began to question Jesus, Jesus let them know this, that living this life, listen, with man as an example, oh my God, is limited. Living this life with uh, uh, your eye only on a person, I don't care of how upstanding they are, I don't care of what they have achieved. It could have been Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, or whatever. It, I don't care how high of the things that they have achieved, you can do better. Touch your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Just don't allow people to become your plumb line. Don't allow people to become your, your, your monitor of how far you can go. Because the ones that you are applauding, the ones that we say are the best, have, they had, they exceeded whoever they were looking at. Look at somebody that say, you can do it. Yeah. Amen. Whatever it is, God has created you to become better than that which you have seen down here on earth. Amen. So, so here's the thing. The Lord is a limitless God. And, and so Jesus let them know this limited life. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, trying to do the impossible. Watching man is impossible. But with Jesus as our perfect example, all things are what? Pop, look at somebody and say, use what you have. Uh, do you I mean, think about what you have. A lot of times we have to take um, inventory of what we actually have. What we actually have. And here I found this out. That the Lord never makes a mistake about you. Never. You may be three feet top of and 18. But the Lord never makes a mistake about you. Amen. You may be nine feet tall. And the Lord never makes a mistake about you. Hallelujah. What man calls uh, a negative, what man calls abnormal, God has created it for you to do something better than what has been expected. Yes, yes. Let me say, use what you got. Use what you got. Use what you got. Use what you got. If I can just express that, if you don't take anything else home today, I just want you to be able to begin to take self-inventory of who you are. You may have come from the other side of the track. Sometimes people say the wrong side of the track. But whatever, I said the other side, whatever side of the track you were born on, came from, was the right side of the track. Amen. Amen. We're living in uh, a day of, of high definition. Uh, high media exposure and it's like we we have seen our children, our young people have seen more than we have seen in their short lifetime. They have been exposed to more than we have been exposed in our 50s, 60s, 70s, 90s and 100. In, in, in 12 years they have seen a whole lot but here's the thing beloved why have they seen it? Why have God given this great and grand opportunity? I tell you, I believe he's given this opportunity because he has more in store for them to accomplish. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I heard Bishop Porter always say the difference between good and great is exposure. The difference between good and great is marketing. Amen. It's a whole lot of, it's, it's some good people. We call them good people in the world and, and we don't call the best the best. Uh, the only time we call the best the best is because we know them. We know them. And so that exposure gives us the, the opportunity to give them that label. So in our text we see uh, Simon Another Pharisee, he, he's been checking Jesus out and is amazed about Jesus' exploits and invites Jesus to his house where he was having a party. Isn't that something? And so uh, when we begin to think about Jesus and, and all that uh, he has been going through and he's been um, opening blinded eyes. 
and, and raising uh, dead folk and giving her uh, second chances to uh, people that uh, the community probably had counted out. Beloved, I believe that God will give you a second chance. He will give you a third chance. He will give you a fourth chance. Matter of fact, you cannot fail in God. Let me say, do it again, Lord. Here it comes, Jesus comes to the party of Simon the Pharisee, you know, Simon the churchgoer. He, I don't know, Simon could be uh, labeled an uh, elder, a minister, a missionary, evangelist, a uh, prophet, you, you know, in the church, in the church. But Jesus comes and, and he invites Jesus to the party. So Jesus arrives at Simon's house where the party is going on and the Bible says that Jesus sits to eat with the Pharisee. First thing I want you to remember on today is Jesus is a limitless savior. Hear me say a limitless savior. He's a limitless savior. What do you mean, pastor? Here we find the son of God, the Messiah, uh, and the anointed one going to a party at the Pharisee's house. No doubt some church folk can find themselves limited to how far they will go to minister to sinners. You know, it's some church folk that won't go on Bill Street because uh, they say the street ain't saved. Hallelujah. But if you go to Bill Street, it ain't the street that's going to cause you to do anything. The street is minding its own business. Amen. It's some people, they won't go to a restaurant that got a bar in it because they say it's liquor in there and the sinners go in there. The sinners are in there. But beloved, why are you saved if not to go to where the sinners are? Hear me say opportunity. There's an opportunity for ministry. But here, so Jesus comes to the party and he pulls up and, and they are all in there and the Pharisee had invited him. Now he invited him, amen? But here's the thing, he invited him and dissed him at the same time. Because the, the, the culture there was, uh, if I invited you to my house for a party, amen, it's, you know, you, you've come across the, the desert, you've come across the Sahara with your sandals on, and you know your feet look like brass right now, and you got sand and all that stuff. And so as, as a host, uh, a proper host, it's my job if I invited you to wash your feet. Amen. It's my job to take care of it. Help me say hospitality. Come on, help me say hospitality. So here it comes, Luke 19 and 9. Uh, 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 he comes in and Luke 19 and 9 says this. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus' whole mission was to go into the lost places to find lost sons and daughters. Do you know where any lost sons and daughters are? Because the Lord has no limits. What better place to go than into the house of the lost? Even though uh, Simon was, was in uh, that particular church, you couldn't tell Simon that he was lost. You couldn't tell, you couldn't come up to him and tell him, no, I, I have a position in the church. No, I have a, 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 a special place where I park my, ca my camel at the church. I, I have position, I have a title holder, but here it is, Jesus is coming into the house of what we will call today the laws. Now it was the custom and protocol as I said for the, the people, the host to, to not only wash their feet but also wash their hair. And even though Simon the Pharisee invites Jesus to the house in these customs he did not do it. Now Jesus didn't get upset. Uh, how many of y'all would have gotten upset when, when the customs were not uh, taken care of. You know, they invited me. They, I mean, they didn't even give me anything to eat. They could have asked me, you know, people come and you say, would you like something to drink? Would you like some water? Would you like whatever you had in the house? Right? That's hospitality. That's customary. 
But this man, he invites him. He ain't even asking, do you want to order? He's just sitting there watching. He's watching. People are watching you to see how you, how you respond instead of react to their diss. Uh -huh. They, they want to see what you're made out of. They, they, they already know what to do, but they want to see if you say you save, if you say you love the Lord. They want to see, are you going to lose it when they don't treat you right? So, so Simon is, is checking him out. He's testing him. He's getting ready to pledge him. He's carrying Jesus through all kind of things to see if Jesus is really who he said he was. Mark 12, uh, the common people heard him gladly. Hear me say, Jesus brings liberation. Jesus comes to set the captive free. That's, that's what this is all about. My friends, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the Bible says the laborers are few. My brothers and sisters, we are here to fill up HNC. That's the objective, that's the goal. We are here to fill H. In Holy Nation Church. Why, Pastor? We're here to fill this place that God has given us with people of like mind, with people. We're here to introduce people to uh, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We're here to introduce them, to give them an opportunity to the tree of life that, that when this life passes over, they will go and reign with him wherever Jesus is. We call that heaven. Amen. We're here to show that, that who are blind to the light of Jesus, the way is our assignment to visit the lost and the lowly, the blind and the seeking, the hurt and the despondent. We have an assignment. Him say we have an assignment. Come on, one more time. Him say we have an assignment. We have an assignment to lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover and like Jesus, we have to possess the passion and desire to want to see conversation and conversion take place. The sick made well, the broken hearted uplifted. Him say, use what you have. Come on, one more time. Him say, use what you have. In the text here, beloved, while Jesus is at the party being disrespected. Something else out of the ordinary happens. The Bible says, the Bible says, a sinner from the city mm, came to Jesus when she heard he was at the party. Now the Bible called this woman a sinner. I ain't talking about nobody else. The Bible calls her a sinner. So evidently she was a what? She was a sinner. She was a sinner from the city. She was a sinner from uh, the street. She had been doing some things like a lot of us have done and are doing sinning, hallelujah, committing sin. In other words, she did not know who the Lord was. He was not in her heart. But here's the thing, isn't that something? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. A sinner from the city came to party with Jesus. Mm. So the first thing we remember that Jesus is a limitless savior, right? The second thing right here is Jesus is a liberator. So I believe this woman saw how Jesus was being. She comes, she comes to the party and she comes and sees how the host is not so kind to the master. And something, I believe, in her began to move in her, into her heart, and she jumps into action. What did she do? The Bible says she, she, she began to correct the error of the host. Uh -huh. The Bible says she stood behind Jesus.
Jesus, can you see her weeping? She, uh, she felt the, 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 that, that, that she knew who he was. And she was there weeping and washing his feet with her tears. Luke 4 and 18 says it like this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has un Let me say, anointed me. Oh my God, how many anointed people are in here today? You got to know that the Lord has anointed you in that by what you do. Hey Amen. You might be, yeah, God, listen, to go to that next level, you need to know that the Lord has anointed you. You need to know that God has made special provision for you. Hallelujah. He has given you an unction to do better, hallelujah, than you did yesterday. Him say, anoint me, Lord. Every, every day can't be like yesterday. Every day, your, every day you jump up in the morning, it should be fascinating. It should be amazing because you have an, another opportunity. Him say, anoint me, Lord. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. At the, na at the, at the name of Jesus, y'all, sinners will be loosed. From the shackles. Hear me say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, blinded eyes can be opened. Hear me say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you will be liberated from all of those things which have caused you pain. Hear me say, in the name of Jesus. Mm, this woman didn't look for water, but she used what she had. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can I park right there for a moment? Use what you got. I know you're saying, I, uh, some of you say, I can't start my business right now because I need about 10 more thousand. Need another rack. I, I, I can't start my business right now but because I need this little bit or that bank turned me down. I, hey, help me say, use what you got. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't go to school right now because they said, touch your neighbor, they, they said I got something missing in my application. They said that, that uh, 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 wait till next semester. How many of you know there are all kind of tales about people telling other people what they couldn't do, what they couldn't accomplish, all of that? Don't allow a fool to hold your future in their hand. Let me say, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. It's going to take Christ in the name of Jesus, but you need to know you can do. Amen? People, I know many people that people say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, uh, sign up for that course. You shouldn't go on that, that trek or you shouldn't go in that direction because you are limited. You don't understand. L listen, don't allow nobody that kind of authority over you. Now, you don't have to just look at them and say, you must be crazy. But you can say, in the name of Jesus, that's not me. They'll, t they'll, they'll want to stack you up in statistical data and say, well, when we look at people like you that come from the experiences that you came from, uh, it doesn't fare too well. But hear me say, in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh, this woman didn't look for water, but she used what she had. She didn't ask for a towel, but she used what she had, the Bible says, what comes from the heart reaches the heart. She was moved by, I believe, the spirit of God, and she used what she had. My brothers and my sisters, the woman saw that Jesus wasn't even upset. 
How many times can we not, you keep, him and say, keep your composure. Uh-huh. And, and keep your composure. Don't get upset when people checking you. Don't get upset when they doing you wrong. Don't get awed and lose, lose it. You know, if a fool is fussing with you and you start fussing, uh, we won't know which one is which. Amen. When, when, thing, when the devil is attacking you, we need to know who's being used by the devil. Uh -huh. So not only is Jesus a limitless savior, not only is he a great liberator, but here it is, Jesus is loving. My last point, God supplied this woman's tears of compassion for the feet of Christ, God supplied the long flowing hair of this woman to wipe and dry this loving Christ. Uh, a carnal mind may say this woman had nothing more than a foot fetish, but in Romans 10 and 15, the passage talks about how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings and good things. The preacher's job is to bring good news. I said the preacher's job. I didn't say the pastor's job. I said, anybody been preaching? Anybody been preaching lately? Oh my God, pastor, you know, I thought you had to go to school to be a preacher. I thought God had to call you to be a preacher. I thought uh, people had to lay hands on you. Listen, all you got to do is be filled with the spirit of God. And then God will give you a word. You need to be encouraging somebody. You need to be encouraging your children. You need to be encouraging your friends. You need to be encouraging uh, uh, your loved ones. You need to be encouraging strangers and telling them about the goodness of the Lord. This woman of the city, this woman with hood and the street experience was also a woman, hallelujah, with enough compassion to recognize a saint from a sinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says she kissed Jesus' feet and anointed them with the ointment from the alabaster box. Let me say, use what you got. Uh -huh. I believe the moment she saw Jesus in uh, that instant, she fell in love with Jesus. Let me say, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Amen, amen. This woman, she may have been from the street. But she had enough sense to know a saint from a sinner. She may have been had hood experience, but she had enough sense, enough experience to know a saint from a sinner. She knew game. They tell me game, no game. Amen. She knew you. You if you, the way you know uh, or can it find out uh, the difference between a counterfeit is you have to spend time. You have to spend time with the real thing. That's how you know a counterfeit. You can't keep testing counterfeit money. Uh, you just keep messing with counterfeit money to understand what counterfeit money feels like. You got to spend time with the real thing. Amen? You, you, you can play with the enemy all you want to. You can play with the enemy all you want to, but you will not know what's the real thing until you spend time with the real thing. Let me say in the name of Jesus. For it was the feet who, these feet, she fell in love with Jesus. Why, y'all? She fell in love with Jesus because she was dealing with the feet. These feet who uh, brought Jesus to the centurion soldier and healed his daughter. She, she fell in love with uh, uh, Jesus because it was these feet that brought Jesus to raise the widow's woman's son from the dead. She fell in love with these feet because it was these feet that were where when a blind man received his sight and these were the feet of the man that would save her from her sin oh my god hallelujah uh, ha hallelujah where where your body can't get anywhere that your feet don't take you 
How many of y'all take care of your feet? Oh, listen. Don't, don't, don't. Make sure you take care of your feet. Because when your feet messed up, all you got there is a lot of hopes and dreams. But, 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 but when your feet are right, you can go to where your dreams are, are, are telling you to go. When your feet are right, you can go to what the vision has. You can accomplish that vision that God has shown you. So this limitless Savior, he was blind to this uh, liberator and did not possess the love of Jesus. Simon the Pharisee, he couldn't understand the limitless uh, nature of the Lord. He could not understand the liberation and the liberty of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He thought he had it when he just said, come to the party, and Jesus came. Isn't that something? But he certainly could not understand that love that the Lord had. Can't you see it? Uh, uh, see uh, uh, that proclaimed prophet, let sinners touch him. Simon said, listen, I got to tell y'all something. He started texting. He started ig and inboxing. He started posting on Facebook. Listen, he talking about he the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's talking about he's a prophet of the most high God, but he down here at the party. And we got it going on at the party. Uh-huh, he texting, can you see him? He said, I'm going to go viral today. He said, oh my God, okay. I, he fell for the trap. I'm just, he just, his little thumb just kicking, boy. He said, oh, the, yeah, he's over here. And check this out. He got a woman from, you know, a wayward woman from the street, and she rubbing on him. Can you believe that? I'm just saying. Sometimes it becomes difficult to do ministry when the world is watching. Because all the world knows to do is go by, hey, Jesus, here it comes. Y'all ready? To go by what it sees. To go by what it has seen. But hear me say, the anointing of God. The anointing of God has set us up. So we, God can allow us to use what we have to go higher. The Bible says, Simon says to himself, Jesus ain't no prophet. But I'm encouraged to know in Hebrews 4 and 15, it says, we do not have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But Jesus has been tempted in every situation, y'all, that we have been yet without sin. In other words, he's our perfect example. Him say the real thing. Spend time with the real thing. And then you'll know the counterfeit. Spend time with the real thing. And then you'll know when you're coming up short. People will come up short today and can't stand nobody to tell them. Can't stand for nobody to come. How will you become better if you keep missing? If you keep missing, you need to at least know what's causing you to miss. Let me say, use what you got. Almost through here. Verse 40, Jesus gives Simon a parable. So Simon, after, look, Simon is texting. People are hitting back. He said, I'm going to get the video together, and I'm going to go to YouTube because they pay better. Uh -huh. they, get, they pay better, so I'm going to get this out because I got the video and the audio. I got him. He, he at my house. He, the people are dancing around him, drinking around him, smoking around him, doing all kind of stuff around him. But here's the thing. Have you noticed? Have you noticed? 
a lot of times when the devil goes out, he's not going to talk about what you are doing. He's just going to talk about what's going on around you. Amen? So here it is. Uh, uh, he gets and, and tells all of this, and Jesus says, okay, I can't be quiet. So when, when you got to know, you can't get, when, on your assignment, good tidings, good things, good news, the gospel message has to go forth. All right? So Jesus says this. He says, listen, I'm going to give you a parable. Jesus would, would speak in parables, a riddle, if you would. And he said, Simon, listen, I'm going to give you this and hope you can catch it. Say it was a creditor and a debtor. It was a creditor and two debtors. Uh, with the credit, these two debtors owed the creditor money. One creditor, creditor number one, owed him a lot of money. And then you had creditor number two that owed him a little money. Y'all got it? One creditor owed him how much money? And then creditor two owed him what? Little money. Then Jesus said, now, Simon, if you can catch this, if you're not so worldly, if you're not so carnal, maybe you can understand this. He said, now, now the, 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 the one that owned the debtor, he uh, forgave both of them. But for the one, he said, now, here's the thing. Here's the parable. Here's the riddle. Tell me this, Batman. Which one? did he forgive the most? The one that had a lot of debt or the one that had little debt? Y'all answer that question. A lot of debt, right? Jesus said, okay, Simon, I thought you would get that. He said, now, get this. This one that y'all have put a title on as from the street. This woman who has, yes, through life done some things like everybody else. This woman, but you have put a title on her. You have put a label on her. Not only that, because of that, because of life, you have uh, labeled her as non-fit. But this woman, you invited me to the party. This your house, Simon. And when I came in the house, you didn't even greet me. When I came in the house, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't have, uh, manicure my hair. When I came, matter of fact, you didn't even give me nothing to eat. But this woman, what you say, who you have judged, this woman who you criticize, this woman who you believe is not fit for anything, when she saw me, compassion came over this woman. When she saw me, she didn't ask for a, a, a bottle of water, but God supplied tears. She began to wash my feet with her tears. She began to use what she had. She began to use her hair for the towel. God anointed her to use what she had. And you didn't use what you got. Don't tell me nothing about this woman, but I'm going to bless this woman because she gave me all she had. I'm going to bless her. And then she said, he said, and Lord, woman, your faith, salvation has come. And you are saved because of your faith. Yeah. Hear me say faith. faith. Everybody say it. Faith without works is dead. Faith without following the unction of the Lord is dead. Hear me say faith. This woman used what she had. Here comes y'all ready? Then. People will label you based upon what has happened. Huh? But the anointing of God 
keeps moving us forward. Don't get caught up into the past, past mistakes, past missteps, past mishaps. Uh, yeah, don't, don't get caught up in the past. The enemy wants to keep you and hold you in a limiting situation. Does not want you to become liberated and understand that God in the name of Jesus can, can forgive everything. Amen. He wants to keep you in your past. He wants to, in your present, he wants to uh, tell you nothing else better is going to happen. But I'm here to uh, challenge you and let you know when you are willing to use what you have, here it comes. In the name of Jesus. Uh, at the name of Jesus. Use what you have. Little boy had, what is it? Bread and fish. Jesus blessed it. And it fed 5,000 men. Plus women and children. Him and say, use what you have. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to somebody today. Because, hallelujah, as we look at media, as we look at social media, we see extravagance. We see abundance. We see $20 million houses. We see $40 million houses. And people own them that look like us. And it, and it seems to be so large that you, oh Jesus you said oh Lord the devil go to talking you will never do that but as I started out in the beginning to say this our sons and our daughters have been exposed and that's a good thing because God exposed them for a reason to understand that there's nothing too hard for God that, let me say nothing. There's nothing that you cannot accomplish in the name of Jesus. Let me say nothing. Use what you have. Faith is all about using what you have and God will give you more to use. Where do we start? The Bible says despise not the day of small things. Because you just start right there. Use what you have. Start now. Look at somebody and say, start now. Whatever that dream, whatever that ambition, whatever that goal, that vision, whatever it is, God says, start now. Now, I'm not talking about later now. I'm talking about now. How do I start, Pastor? This is how you start. I'm glad you asked that question. Come down here to this altar and began to see what God has for you. You want to start now? Come down here right now. Hallelujah. And I believe by faith when God gets through moving by his spirit, this woman was a sinner, but when she came in contact with Jesus, the Lord forgave her for everything. Him and say, use what you have. I want to pray for somebody. Just that matter of fact, matter of fact, yeah, just because here's the thing. Thank you, Lord. Those of you on our virtual platform as well, hallelujah. Type it in the chat. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. As I use what I have. Use me, Lord, as I use what I have. Come on, type that in the chat. The rest of you that's in this platform here, hallelujah. You want the Lord to use you mightily. You want to be able for your dreams and your vision and your, amb uh, your, your ambitions and things to come to fore. Because here's the thing, because in this season, what God blesses you with will bless others. Come on down here right now. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, begin to clap those hands. Come on down here, move on. Thank God for that word. We thank God for that wonderful word that he sent to us on today. If you gave your life to the Lord on today, would you go to our chat room and punch in the number three so we will know that you joined the body of Christ on today? I know heaven is rejoicing and just elated, and we are as well, that you have joined the body of Christ. 
want to also invite you to our Empowering You for Life Bible Study. Uh, every week our pastor is teaching on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on our Holy Nation YouTube channel. And we would like for you to come and be a part of our Bible study. You can also join us Monday through Friday for our prayer conference call uh, on, on Monday through Friday. Uh, that information should be at the bottom of the screen. You are welcome to join us. We also have prayer on Fridays at 10 a.m., after which Perfecting Vessels come on at 12 noon, and we certainly will be glad to have you there. And we want to and just invite everyone to come and be a part of Holy Nation YouTube channel. Make sure you just share and subscribe and do everything you need to do to continue to help us get the word of God out to the world. I want to thank you for your stewardship as well to Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for you. As you know, we have several means of giving uh, to Holy Nation Ministries. Uh, all of that information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, you're welcome to do that. You can even come by the church and drop it off, or you are welcome to mail it in if that's your means of getting it in to us. We will be so glad to receive it at that time. Thank you again for your stewardship. Well, until next time, we just want to say that we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining us uh, on Holy Nation YouTube channel. We'll, we love to have you. You're welcome here at any time. And until next time, God bless and walk in favor.